Hello everyone! My name is Olga and I am a creative director at Vintage Web Production in Kyiv, Ukraine. Most people know me for the work I do, but very few know that I am also a former sports person. I used to speed skate. I dedicated a lot of time to it, won many awards and got to a professional level. Sports has always been my passion and so has creativity. I actually see a lot of similarities between these two. I believe that creators and sports people have to do the same things to become successful. If you think about it, they're all preparing for a competition of a kind. Sports people dream to participate in Olympics. Creators dream to get to the top of the market and compete with their role models. I know a great competition for designers that allows them to show their skills and make a complete product in only two hours. Can you imagine? But we will get there later. Back to the creators and sports people. What are the things they need to keep in mind while preparing for the competition in order to succeed? First, creativity. Creativity is not a gift from heaven. I often hear people say that to be creative you need to be born creative. This is a very common misconception. No sports person on earth became successful because they were born an outstanding sprinter. Sure, talent is a thing, but as Thomas Edison once said, a genius consists of 1% inspiration and 99% sweat. It takes a lot of workout and training to become an athlete. Creativity, just like sprinting, is a skill, so it can be worked on and developed. When you come to a running track for the first time in your life, you don't expect to know how to run properly, do you? Of course not. You get someone to learn from, someone to coach you through the breathing, the motion and the technique. The first time you try, you will still probably fail. But practice makes perfect. You train regularly. You make progress, you learn something new and become stronger and stronger. This makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So how is creativity so different? What it should either be there from the very beginning or be given up on? The truth is, things shouldn't be this way. Creativity can be trained. When you first start working in your own creative field, you shouldn't expect to be good at the stuff you are doing straight away, just like you don't expect to be the best printer out there when you first come to a track. Creativity has its own tools and techniques that you are yet to find out about. A junior creator might have to find a mentor that will guide them through the learning processes, step by step, task by task, and the skills will develop and the creator will become more professional and independent. Remember that nobody wins the Olympics if they skip the basic junior league. Second, team. If you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, get a team. The people you work with are essential. They must be a source of energy, inspiration, support and help. After all, your team has to be there for you in the long run. So, so make sure you work with the people you trust and value. Professional sports people have a team that consists of a coach, a doctor, a master, and even other sports people to complete with. Don't get me wrong, I am not talking about teams as in football. It's more of this that athletes have, or speed skaters. By the way, in speed skating, that's competitive sport, you need your opponent's help to train, even through their doughty 
no teams, skaters team up to help each other train. They also get help from their doctors and so on. Same goals for creators. It's always better to have someone to back you up when you're sick or gone. Because if you work alone and say, get sick, your working process stops and doesn't continue until you're back on track. But a team isn't only about substituting your colleagues, it's also about help and understanding. Your team are the people who will be there for you when you need them. They will help you generate your ideas and execute them for an outstanding project. They will become your family and be there for you through sick and thin. Get a team. Seriously. Third, stress. Learn to cope with stress. Both sports people and creators sometimes face difficulties at work, so it's important to learn to react to them. Stress has a different impact to everyone. Some people lose courage and can't function properly. Some honestly panic too much even if the problem isn't that big of a deal. Some pretend like nothing is going at all, but some pull themselves together and function better than ever. Stress isn't always a negative factor. You can definitely turn it in your favor. You just need to learn to do it. Sprinting is a good example. You have to put all of your effort in into 100 meters of a track. It is a short distance, but you need to concentrate and do your absolute best as fast as humanly possible. Sounds extremely stressful, doesn't it? So how do you learn to deal with these situations? The answer is simple. Practice a lot. The more stressful situation you face while training, the better you will be able to handle them if they occur during a competition. A creator's work is very different in this aspect either. We work with the clients a lot, so we get to deal with all sorts of people, limitations and deadlines. You constantly see people who get mean, annoying or even aggressive. And doing our job definitely gets nerve-wracking at times. But some people can concentrate and hustle even despite the pressure they are under. So coping mechanisms are something to be trained to. The more we go through this unfortunate situation, the more ways we find to cope with stress. And this means we grow and become forged. We know for a fact we will handle whatever we face. And that's amazing. Fourth, tactics and strategies. Don't forget about the tactics and strategies. You can't win a race if you have to plan, if you have no plan as for how you are going to do it. Let's talk about runners. Their tactics and strategies will differ depending on whether they are running a marathon or sprinting. For a sprint, it is crucial to put all your effort into a short distance, not to start too late or stop too early and so on. Whereas for a marathon, you have to allocate your energy well in order to make sure you get to the finish line. After all, 42 kilometers is pretty big of a distance. So as you can see, two seemingly similar cases will require two totally different approaches. Let's take a look at the presentation. In the first video, this guy definitely has a plan, but he also kind of forgot to take into account his body mass. Oops! 
In second video, these people have certainly got a great strategy, but totally forgot about the tactics. And as you can see, things didn't exactly go as planned. And the last one here, whether or not the car driver had planned all their actions, they made an awful mistake at the beginning of their work. Fingers crossed for them. Now, creativity requires certain tactics and strategies too. It certainly depends on the goal you're trying to achieve. But one way or another, you'll see how important it is to have a plan for all sorts of scenarios. However, keep in mind that coming up with a strategy, for example, isn't enough. You have to make sure you don't forget to use it when times come. You never know what tricks your client can pull on you. You never know what changes might have to be applied to the product two hours before it's due and so on. So having very minor mishap planned beforehand definitely helps in case anything of kind occurs. Another important point, when you make a plan, it always looks perfect on paper, but when issues really start happening, oftentimes you end up facing troubles that you had never expected to face. So when, a ma when making a plan, remember to map out your actions in case any part of the plan goes wrong. If you think through everything, including the details, the chances of things going as planned increases by a lot. What's more, for my previous point, you already know that a reliable team is a must. So guess who will help you think through the tactics and the strategies? Faves, be brave. It's always takes a great deal of bravery to be yourself. Many people fear failure. You, some are afraid of looking stupid or unprofessional, and that makes sense. Doing something that scares you doing something that scares you involves leaving your comfort zone. But it is absolutely impossible to grow and develop in your comfort zone. To become a better version of yourself, you need to be brave and overcome your fears. A part of being brave is being aware of the risks that you can face during your trip out of the comfort zone. So fasten your seatbelts, the road will be bumpy. Keep in mind that there is a difference between taking a risk and just being stupid. You have to make sure to know the possible consequences of your choices in order to make a responsible decision. And remember, you can't win Olympic Games if you are too scared to try. So maybe start with a smaller competition. Speaking of smaller competition, Two Hours Design Battle is a competition for web designers where they can show their level by making a complete functioning website in just two hours. This is an example of an event in terms of which creators get to go through the entire journey that sports people go through in their case. They train their creativity, test their sustainability in stressful situations, try out new strategies and get support from their mentors. When we first started two hours design battle in March 2018, the contestants didn't know what it would be like. Participating was a total risk, but time passed, more people find out about the competition, started training and preparing for it, started setting 
timers trying to see how fast they can deal with a task and so on. What's more, many of participants who were simple unknown designers in the beginning of two hours design battle became famous in a span of a year. They became lecturers, speakers, and just cooler designers in general. Sure, it was local fame, no international recognition yet, but it's pretty awesome anyway, isn't it? Another thing that's worth mentioning is how your own development as creator impacts the entire market. Sounds crazy, I know, but think about it. When you develop your creative skills, you upgrade the level of your clients, you start working with the cooler ones. This affects your cool clients' products. They become better in terms of quality. Then everyone sees the new level of the products they so they want to correspond and be just as cool. As a result, the entire market develops. It is unbelievable how much you can affect creative people all around the globe. Creativity is indeed like sports. It can be learned and applied in everyday life. I recently heard an intriguing theory that we don't actually live to find happiness. Philosophy, culture, religion, and so on. All of this was invented by humans. Creative humans, for sure. But, in fact, we live to survive. Survival is a basic instinct that pushes us to move forward evolve and learn, I believe we need creativity to survive, too. Creativity is a skill that we use when we are out of obvious solutions, when we need to come up with an idea or manage an uncommon task. It is there for every work of art, invention and every piece of clothing that you are wearing right now. Looks like creativity is tightly connected to our survival, so let's develop it and make survival fucking exciting. Be brave, be creative, develop your skills and thrive. I wish you the best of luck and a gold medal at the Olympics. Thank you.